Bible to Psalm chapter 1. First Psalm. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. What exactly are the blessings of God? I know you all may have some ideals about ideas uh, about what the blessings of God are. And I'd like to just look at a few of them today. <laughs> Most people would say that maybe the material things of the world, wealth, might be a blessing from God. Uh, I know there are a lot of churches that, that preach the health and wealth gospel. Uh, you know, their, their philosophy is that, you know, if you give to God, God's going to give back to you and, and you're going to have all that you ever needed. Uh, I don't agree with that uh, kind of theology, uh, but that's what they teach. But anyway, thinking about the blessings of God financially, I've seen a lot of godly people. They gave everything to God. They followed God with their whole heart. They served Him with a great passion. And yet they have struggled financially. And I've seen very ungodly people that could care less about God. That put down His name and fight against God their whole life. And they're doing quite well financially. So, if the blessings of God were financial riches, then why do godly people suffer and ungodly people prosper? I just want you to think about that. Some would say that the blessings of God might be health and maybe a long life. Somehow, if people can just serve God faithfully, they can let them live uh, a long time in life. Well, I've seen very godly people that served God, that tried to live up to the example that Jesus uh, left us in his word, uh, that died way too young. And I've seen people that were very ungodly, that didn't do anything for God, that lived wild and reckless lives that have made it to a ripe old age. Some would say that the blessings of God are their families. And y'all might agree with me. Hey, families, now that's a blessing from God. But you know what? I've seen godly couples that, that absolutely love the Lord and give everything to Him, served Him with their whole heart, that their kids decided that they wanted to be wild and rebellious. And I've seen their kids disrespect them. And I've seen kids that uh, actually hate the ground that they walk on. They despise their parents. And then I've seen ungodly parents that have done everything in the world to, to discourage God in any part of our society that have wonderful families. They love each other. They worship the ground that they walk on. They treat their family as a, as a treasure. So if God's blessings aren't attached to wealth, health, long life, loving family, then what are the blessings of God in our lives? Now there's a couple things that I want to try to point out to you in the scriptures today. I hope I can make it clear to you. 
But the first way that God can bless you is He's going to be with you in life. No matter what you go through in life, God is going to be there for you. Look back at verses 1 through 3 again. Let's see if I can point it out for you. <clears throat> Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. If we fully rely on God to lead our lives, we yield to his word for the direction in our lives. Then we're going to be like a tree that's planted by the water. We're going to be well nourished. We're going to be taken care of no matter what we face. In those times when it's when it's really tough times, I, I mean really, really tough times that we have in life, those heartbreaking times, we're still going to be nourished no matter what we go through. God's word will nourish our soul and it will strengthen our bones. Now, when I was writing this sermon, I was remembering back to a time that was tough on me and that was in 1999 when me and Gina separated briefly and I drove her to Texas. And I flew back the next day on a plane by myself. I remember walking into our bedroom that night I was a broken man. I had no strength. I couldn't do anything but fall down into bed and go to sleep. But the next day, somehow, I managed to, to pick myself up and to start picking up broken pieces of my life. And somehow, I managed to make it to Sunday to go to church. You see, I walked into that church a dead man walking. And I came out of that church a new man living. Amen. You see, that's what God does. When I yielded to God for my life, he began to pick up the pieces and to be with me. He got Gina back. He restored our marriage and he saved us from an eternal life <coughs> in hell. And for those things, I can't thank him enough. Now see, your times of greatest suffering may be different from my time. <coughs> Y'all may not have gone through some of the tough things that me and Gene has gone through. But that doesn't mean you haven't gone through tough times. I know everybody has the things that they have to go through in life. But as a believer, we can cling to God's instructions for our life. We can cling to his word. And then we can understand the blessing that no matter what, God is going to be with us in all things. And we do that by not walking in sin. We don't do what the world does. We don't walk in sin. We don't live in a sinful life. We walk away from all that stuff. We cling to his word. And then we do something really crazy. Really, really crazy. We actually live out what his word says. We don't just read it. We live it. Now... Suppose I had a table up here and I had a million dollars on it. And I said, it is yours if you want to come up here and get it. And you came up here and you grabbed that money and you took it home. And then you put it up on the shelf and you left it there. Would that million dollars benefit you? Would it benefit your family? Would it benefit your friends? Absolutely not. And you see, God is like that too. He offers us salvation, which is far more valuable than a million dollars or a billion dollars or a trillion dollars. Because even a trillion dollars wouldn't buy you an eternity in heaven. So your salvation is of great value. And many people have come up here and they've walked up this aisle and they accepted Jesus into their heart. They have claimed salvation. Yet they take it home and they put it up on a shelf and they leave it there. 
They don't live any part of their life for God, but they claim that they're saved because at one time they made that confession of faith. But you know what? If you do that kind of thing, you're not going to have any benefits of God being with you in your life. He's not going to be there when you're suffering through heartache. He's not going to give you that peace that you need when you're going through those tough times. Your friends won't have the opportunity to see the joy that God can give you because he saved you from an everlasting hell. We cannot have salvation apart from God. To claim it as a one-time deal and then to walk away from it, you're fooling yourself. We have to have God in our lives. We have to have his word and direction for our lives. We have to have what his law says, what his word says to us to tell us how to live our lives. We have to have that. If we don't have that, then I wonder what we got when we walked forward when we picked up salvation from the altar. Did we really pick up salvation from the altar? You see, when we really, truly pick up Jesus at the altar and we invite him into our heart, then we want him everywhere. We want him at our jobs. Imagine God being with you at work all day long. I don't know about you, but that brings me peace. When I'm sitting at work and I'm just reading his word and, and listening to the music or, or just... I walk around whistling. I don't even know what I'm whistling. Guy at work says he whistles all the time. What's he whistle? I don't know. And you know what? He's asking me, what are you whistling? I don't know. I'm just whistling. I got God with me. You see, we want God at work. We want him at the store. We want him in the restaurant when we go to eat. We want him in our homes. We want him everywhere that we go. We constantly think about his word. We constantly think about his spirit that is living inside of us. We want to do everything we can to please God. We want to walk away from sin. We don't want any part of it. But if we lay aside God's word, if we lay aside God in our lives and leave him here at church and walk out of here, then don't be surprised. Don't be mad at God. When troubles find you. God is always with us as a child of his. God is always there to help us through whatever we go through in life. And if we walk away from him, we will not have the blessing of God being there to give us peace. The second way that God can bless us not only is he going to be with us here on this earth, but we're going to be with him for all eternity. I don't know about you, but it's one of the greatest blessings. I cannot imagine an eternity without God. But God is going to be with us. Not only with us, but he's going to be with all of his children that have believed. Those that have gone on before us. God is going to be there. They're going to be there. And we're going to have uh, that blessing. Now, if you're having troubles in life, if, if things aren't, like I said, I've seen godly people suffer financially. Godly people suffer with their health. Godly people suffer uh, with their families. Uh, if all of those things, if poor finances, if poor health, uh, if poor families, uh, strange situations are happening, but it were only going to happen for a short time, and then God was going to restore you to the riches beyond anything that you've ever known. When you think about when we get up into heaven, uh, the riches of this world are going to look like dirt. It's not going to mean anything to us. So if all of that was just for a short time, and then God was going to restore our health, he was going to restore us to uh, the privilege of being his child in heaven. If he was going to... Uh, Restore the blessings of the family, the, of bringing the family together. Would it be easier for you to handle those tough situations? Yeah, I 
think it would be very easy to handle those situations. No matter what we go through down here as a Christian, everything, every heartache, every drama, everything that we've been through in life, one day is going to vanish and disappear. We're not going to know it anymore. You see, all that happened because of the promise that Jesus gave us when he was nailed to a cross. He said, I'm taking away the heartache, I'm taking the pain and all the problems of sin, and I'm giving you the blessing of salvation and the blessing of an eternity in heaven. But you know what? Both of those blessings of being with us while we're down here on earth and then being with us forever in eternity, both of those blessings come with a strong warning. Look back at verses 4 through 6. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. If we ignore God's warning to turn away from sin in our lives and to turn our hearts over to him and his instructions for on how we should live our lives, if, if we ignore all of that, then there are penalties. The first penalty might be that our lives are miserable, that we're, we're going to suffer heartache and, and not be able to get through things because we don't feel God's presence. But that warning could also mean that we're not saved, that we're going to have an eternity in hell because we have rejected God. Now, when we walk in this world, when we're trying to live our lives, we need to be very aware of what's going on around us. We talked about it in our Sunday school today. You need to know God's word in order to understand what's happening around this world. But if, if we want to throw away God's word and, and not live by it, then we need to understand that uncertainty will be around every corner and that it will be ready to pounce on us like a lion. 1 Peter 5, 8 reminds us to be sober, to be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. See, our faith is not a game to be played. It's a serious, serious commitment to the Lord to surrender control of our lives over to him. We let him use us and work in us for his glory. Now, we can either be bitter about our circumstances here in life or we can get better with God leading the way and helping us to overcome anything. So we got to understand that if we're not serious there, there's going to be some consequences in our life. And we've got to think about what those consequences are. Have you been serious in your life with God? Or have you been playing games? If you haven't been serious, then what might a consequence be for your life? Now, when I think back to what I said earlier, me and Gina, our marriage was struggling. You know, the consequences of us, what we come to find out is when, when we put our hands and our trust into God, we found out that we were lost. We found out that we needed a Savior. We needed that healing in our marriage. We needed that healing in every part of our life. When we fully yielded our lives over to Him, then God gave us that peace to handle the storm. No matter what the storm is. Now, does that mean that we have to like the storm? No. I've been in a lot of storms in my life, and I haven't liked a one of them. But since I've become Jesus, since I've become his child by my faith, 
I can tell you that he has helped me through every storm that I've ever went through. Many people in our world today, and this is the part that hurts, they reject the voice of God calling out to them in their lives. They reject God trying to call them to repent and to turn their lives over to him. You see, the thing is, God knows those that reject him. And those that reject Jesus and the payment for the uh, the sacrifice of our sins on the cross, those that reject him, uh, they're going to spend all eternity away from God. And that hurts. Because I've got a lot of friends, a lot of family, a lot of people I know that push away God, that don't want to repent. They want to live however they're going to live. And then they don't really care what God's Word says. And it hurts because I know what the consequence is going to be for their actions. That's what drives me to, to preach. That's what drives me to go to a foreign country and share the gospel. That's what, that's what drives me to share my faith with people that I love, people that I care about, even people that maybe I really don't care so much for. I do everything in my power to share Christ with them the best way that I can. And I'm telling you, being an introvert, it's very hard on me to do so. I wish God made me an extrovert and I could just go up and start talking to a wall and, and you know what, it'd have a conversation with me. But that's not me. So I have to fight the devil to be known, to be vocal for the, for the Lord. There's only two choices in life. We can yield to God's mercy and his forgiveness or we can fight against him. We can do things God's way or we can do things our way. When we fight against God, I can tell you, you are not going to win. You are not going to win fighting against God telling him you're going to do life the way you want to do it. It doesn't work like that. But if you give in, yield to his mercy and grace then you'll be blessed with his presence no matter what you go through you're going to be okay now do you want to be blessed in life knowing that God's with you no matter where you go at work, at the store wherever you happen to walk into God's always with you do you want to know that or do you want to choose to live your life according to the world's standards? The choice is up to you. We can live in stubbornness or we can live yielding to God. You see, God already knows what choice all of us have made. He knows that choice. But he's patient. He waits on us to yield. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word, for the blessing that you're with us, the blessing that you're going to be with us for all eternity. God, in life, there is nothing, nothing that can take the place of those two things. That's the greatest thing to know. That's the greatest thing to have. And Father, if we don't have it, we know others that don't have it. Father, work in our hearts. Help us to help them to see their need for you. God, give us the words. Give us the wisdom and how to handle every situation that we come across. Because, Father, our eternity is the most most demanding thing that we need to address in this world. Father, help us to do that. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.